Hey, Fun Science users. So I'm going to walk through the process of setting up a custom domain using a domain that I have registered through Google Domains. Uh, now, I actually suggest that you use Google Domains over something like GoDaddy, for example. There's a few reasons for that. And I think you're going to find that the setup is going to be much easier. Um, also, it's going to be cheaper for you in the long run. Uh, Google might charge a little bit higher for the first year of uh, registration for your domain where Google might charge like 12 bucks for the first year. GoDaddy might charge like, I don't know, like eight bucks or something like that for the first year. But in subsequent years, it's going to be $12 for Google Domains. GoDaddy is probably going to be, I don't know, like maybe like 20 bucks or something like that. But um, no, that's not really that much of a difference. But there's something called privacy protection um, that Google includes in the price, that $12 that you, you pay per year, whereas GoDaddy charges separately for that. Uh, they charge, I think, maybe like 20 bucks for the first year, maybe free in the first year. And then subsequent years, it's like 70 or $80 uh, per year. And what privacy protection is, and I definitely recommend that you have this in place. Basically what that is, is uh, whenever you register a domain, um, it is required that some sort of contact information is provided with that domain to be publicly listed across the internet, right? And so you can kind of think of it as like a giant uh, white pages of uh, domains and who owns the domains. And so with privacy protection in place, the register, uh, the registrar of the domains, in this case, either like Google or, or GoDaddy, would put their contact information there if you have privacy protection in place. If you don't have it in place, then it's going to be your name, address, and phone number listed. Well, then you'll get a bunch of people that are spamming you, asking for uh, to handle your marketing needs or set up a website for you and all that kind of stuff. And you just don't want to deal with that, right? So that's why I suggest getting privacy protection in place. But anyways, moving along. Um, let's set up our custom domain. Uh, I set up this site really quickly here in phone sites. Uh, I haven't customized or anything like that, just setting up for this domain demo. So let's go into the config screen here. And I'm going to set up my custom domain. Um, so under advanced configuration, under custom domain, just type in my custom domain that I have registered through Google. And then um, whenever I put in that custom domain over here, phone sites will tell me that I need to update my DNS. I need to add what's called an A record for my custom domain. And the A record needs to point to this value here, 159.89.244.198. So if I just click into that IP address, it's automatically going to copy it for me. So I've got that copied. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select save here. And then I'm going to hop on over to Google Domains. And I'm in my DNS settings here for my domain. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. I can skip the name server section. That's already set up for me automatically by Google, and uh, I already have this selected to have DNS sec uh, already set up for me. This is just security. Uh, I definitely suggest that you set this up. This is free as well. Uh, the default value, I think, would just say like enable DNS sec. You could just simply click into that and then it will enable it for you. Pretty simple. Skip over the registered host section. Um, skip over the synthetic record section. We'll come back to that in a second. And then down here under custom resource records, this is where you're going to need to set up your A record. So I already have my A record set up, but I'm going to show you what you need to put into these fields up here to be able to set up this A record. You simply need to just put in an, an at symbol here. I know it looks like there's already one in there. It, this is just like a, a, a suggested value. This is actually not typed in here yet. Notice the, the slight difference here between this light gray versus black, whatever I actually put in that symbol here. Okay, so now there's an actual value there after I typed in the letter or the character at symbol. Um, I'm going to keep this drop down to be a record. I'm going to keep this as 1H. I actually, I don't need to type this in. I think it will, by default, uh, make this 1H. And then I'm going to put in my IP address that I had just copied for phone sites, right? 159.89.244.198. 159.89.244.198. And then I would select add here. Um, I, I'm actually uh, not able to select add here because uh, there's already an, an A record associated with my DNS because I had already set this up, right? So it's telling me record already in use. So 
I'm all set with that. And I did save this over here. So now if I go to my domain here, I should expect to find the default page that I have set up here in phone sites. So there we go. So once I open up in a different tab, my domain, I should expect to see this default page. So let's go test that out. And there we go. So there's the phone size funnel. Now, one more change we need to make back over here in Google domains. We need to set up uh, a synthetic record to address the www subdomain. Okay, so let's set up our www subdomain so, uh, so that we can avoid 404 error messages if someone goes to www and then my domain, right? So I'm going to keep under synthetic records, I'm going to keep subdomain forward. Uh, I'm going to keep that value here. I'm not going to select dynamic DNS or G Suite. And I'm going to put into the subdomain field here, www. Um, I'm going to then come over here. I'm just going to put in my domain. And suppose that. And then I'm going to change these radio button selections. I'm going to change it from temporary to permanent redirect. And I'm going to um, keep this as do not forward path. And then I'm going to select enable SSL. Enable SSL just pertains to the uh, security for the URL. So as you can see here, the HTTPS. So this S stands for the SSL certificate that would be associated with our URL. So now I'm going to go ahead and select add here. And just fair warning here, you're always going to see this red warning message uh, appear here just because it says it's it from Google's perspective, it's saying that the SSL certificate for the domain has been created yet. It could take up to 24 hours to complete. Um, it, I typically see that it doesn't take 24 hours to complete. So if I were to come back and refresh this page, uh, that I think the red warning message would be gone. And the SSL certificate, actually it's still there, but anyways, um, this, this will go away within, I would say probably an hour, but uh, the, the SSL certificate will be associated with your domain. And so if someone were to go to HTTPS www.hometeamlending.com, it should be fine, right? And in fact, the, the address bar uh, is going to redirect so that it's just HTTPS hometeamlending.com and then it's going to display our funnel here, the, the basics, the, the beginning of the, the funnel that I have not edited yet. So now I can go ahead and test out the subdomain setup. Um, fair warning though, it can take up to an hour perhaps for this to be completely finalized. Um, so this might actually air out if I try to test this out. And by air out, this is what I mean here. So I'm gonna actually test this out though using a, a tool that I have um, just because, again, this can take up to an, an hour. Plus, also, uh, my browser has already cached that maybe the, the, this didn't work before where I tested it out before. So I'm going to test out on my side really quickly to see if my brand new www subdomain record has been propagated across the Internet. So I'm going to use this tool here. to check different servers across the globe to see if my record has propagated. And what I would expect to find is there's gonna be like little screenshots or little pictures of how my domain appears across different parts of the globe. And I expect to find something that looks kind of like this little image here in each one of these. So there's one, so it's working. It's propagating across the internet it's just that when I try it on my computer, I can't see it yet. And just like whenever you've set up a custom domain yourself, you probably won't see your domain quite right away just because of it takes a while for this to propagate across the internet. And you may already have an older version of the page cached in your browser. So there you go, folks. Hopefully that helps out. Thanks. Let me know if you have any questions.